Friends, a user asked how to make a pencil holder for one of their favorite teachers. I've got a strategy, so let's get cracking. So version one was a little bit short for putting pencils in. Let me show you how easily we can build this. Step one, of course, is to visit Tinkercad. I always choose sign in with Google. If you're at the home page, we can simply hit create and new 3D design. Let's begin by naming it pencil holder. Let's start by building the box. Friends, I love this tool. Click search and type soft, press enter, and you will find the soft box. I highly recommend making it a favorite and then bring one out to use. This little guy is amazing because you can do these awesome rounded corners. I want to do this chiseled edge for this project, so I'm going to get rid of those by simply making this zero. You'll see that makes it nice and crisp. I'm going to change the wall to one because once again, trying to print this fast because you may have many teachers or friends you want to build one for. And then we're going to simply type parameters. I'm going to tell you that X should be 80. I'm going to tell you that Y should be 30. And then Z needs to be about 75 so that the pencils can stand up. Notice if it doesn't snap to the right height, just change it. I'm going to make that 80. Let it do its little math. That red line means Tinkercad is thinking. Press 75 and bingo, we have already built the wall for our box. Let's quickly add the base. This time we're going to go back to the normal cube. When you bring this out, I will show you that if you type a radius, like say we put five, it gets fantastic round corners on it. But I also want to show you that if you stretch it with the handles after that, it breaks that beautiful rounded shape. So I'm going to bring that out again. And I'm just going to remind you again, if you're using these parameters, which there's my five, and then I'm going to change my steps to one because I want that chiseled look. If you drag the handles after that, it can break your creation. Now, because of this size five, we're going to just take these measurements and we're going to add five and five, which is 10 to each of them. So we're going to go 40 by 90. It is so simple. We're going to change that length to 40. We're going to change the width to 90. And then another bit of trick ration. You can see there's five plus 10 in the middle plus five. So if we subtract this down to 10, we have got the chiseled shape that quickly. Now we're going to cut it off. This one we can simply bring out, stretch all the way past, and then if we change that height to 5 and press enter, if we select the two and do control G, we've just built the stand. D to drop, select the two, L for a line, and let's choose middle and middle. Quite often I do like to look at this middle from the corner so we can see it better. Now I do want this on top. So right now I'm going to hide it. I'm going to put the work plane on our shape. Now when I hit show, I can click the yellow one and press D to drop so that it is on top. With that work plane still there, let's add our dividers. I'm going to cruise this out onto that shape. We're going to change its measurements. I'm going to just type one for the distance here. And then this distance will be 30, take away two. So that means 28. I'm going to choose a height of 65 for this. And once again, select L for a line, and I want them to be in the middle. Now, if you want to line these up perfectly, you can use this trick. Pick the distance you want, do Control D, nudge the other one the distance you want. And then if you shift select those two and do Control G to group them, now, when you grab those parts and do L for a line, it will put them exactly centered. Now, we did not measure these gaps to make them the same, but we did center this right in between it. At this point, friends, let's get our text. You could simply use this text right here, but I like to make text a little more fancy. I'm going to do that in Canva. As you can see, I chose sign in with Google. We are going to create a new design, and then I always use the Instagram square post. Today we're going to add text, add a text box, type the text. I'm going to do Mr. and I'm going to press enter and I'm going to type Stevens. Of course, you would use whatever name you wanted. Then I'm going to select it and pick a fun font. You can go through all of these different choices. There are so many. When I look at the handwriting ones, you do want to make sure that it is a thicker one. That'll be good for 3D printing. I'm going to use this one called Celandine. 
I'm going to stretch it so it's quite a bit larger. And then you could do file and download the image. I like to use my screen capture tool. I've got a shortcut that I can simply click, grab, and that brings it to Snagit where I can also quickly export it. And that exports it as a JPG for the next step. Our next tool is Pick SVG. It is a fantastic tool that makes our shapes into an SVG in just a few clicks. Of course, we upload the picture we just saved. There is my JPG. We do not want these outside lines, so I'm gonna switch to internal SVG. When I've got this, I can simply download it, and I'm just gonna put it in my downloads folder. Now we need to return to Tinkercad. I'm gonna move this to the side, and we're gonna simply hit import, choose a file, and we wanna find that SVG we just created. We do need to switch to art. Remember that this is only eight centimeters, so I'm gonna change this to 75 and press enter. And then we can hit import to bring it in. After a moment, it shows up. I am gonna click on it and then press the letter C for cruising, and we can cruise it up onto our shape. Stretch the height to whatever size you want. I'm going to choose a thickness of 1.5 millimeters. That'll help in making it print faster. My initial one added a football, but Mr. Stevens teaches shop. So instead, I have searched for hammer. When we bring the hammer out, I'm going to set it down. And then I want to cut it in half so I can stick it on this wall. To do that, I simply bring out a hole. Make sure it is larger than the shape in every direction. I'm going to hide that for a second and let's check the height of the shape. It is 11.57. Half of 11 is about 6. So when I do show all, I can simply change this height to 6. And now if I select the two items and do Control G, they will group and the hammer is ready to add to the project. I'm going to simply hit C for cruising, grab the dot, and stick it right on our project. This makes it nifty for rotating, and I can also hold shift squeeze to shrink it so it's the exact size I like. I need to do shift nudge to move it into place. Notice if you lose the green work plane, you can simply add a manual work plane and go right back to it as you get it exactly how you want it to be. If we look at this right now, it's sticking out 2.27, which should turn out pretty awesome. If I do another shift nudge, I can get this exactly placed how I want for the fun filled project. I'm going to put the work plane back on the ground. Once again, press W and click. You could play with the colors right now. You could add words on the back. Of course, there's a ton of room for you to have a blast and make this absolutely epic. Friends, when you're done, don't forget, printing your project is as simple as selecting the parts you want, choosing export, and saving it as an STL. I always put mine in my 3D modeling folder and then you simply save the shape. I will also let you know if you want to show the world, it is super simple. In Tinkercad, these are the steps I follow. First, I change the background color to something I think is cool. Today I'm going to go with a tan and then I also shut off the grid. When you click outside that, you can see you've got a view of your project without the grid. Then simply return to the Tinkercad desktop. Click up on the gear, choose properties. Of course, give a description. Note mine has the tutorial coming soon. Give it some tag. Don't forget if you ever tag any project with HLMT23, I will check out that design and of course give you a reaction. Finally, make your design public. Prove you're not a robot. And then I always choose attribution, no derivatives, because instead of copying my project, I'd rather have you come up here, follow that tutorial, and gain some epic skills. Lastly, hit save changes. As I wrap up, I do want to say thanks again to Gemma for suggesting the original project. Friends, have a glorious day, and keep tinkering. Friends, as I wrap up, I do want to take a moment to remind you about my website, 
hlmodtech.com. I've got a tab dedicated to Tinkercad. Below that, you'll find tons of amazing categories. Also, the day one favorites, the useful starters, and the Tinkercad essentials. If you scroll down a little bit further, you will find my course, Tinkercad in 20 Days, which is hosted on cadclass.org. This video will teach you all about it. And of course, there's a sweet coupon code that'll get you 25% off any of the amazing courses on the site. Of course, you can use this link right there to visit in minutes. Finally, friends, don't forget the sweet built-in messaging tool. You can click that button, add your question, comment, or suggestion, and reach me almost instantly. Lastly, friends, I do also want to highlight the Tinkercad Community Discord. As you can see, there are a boatload of members, and it's a fantastic place to talk everything Tinkercad. Finally, friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Don't forget you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.